Minister. Yes, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I move that so much of standing and sessional orders be suspended as would prevent the Leader of the House moving a motion without notice to require the Leader of the Opposition to immediately one, condemn and retract attacks by members of the party he leads on the Governor of the Reserve Bank and on the Secretary of the Treasury, and two, apologise for and retract his own reckless and irresponsible attack on the Secretary of the Treasury in question time on Tuesday at a time of global financial crisis. Madam Deputy Speaker, today The question is that the member be no longer heard. All of those had opinions. Yes, I did call him. I'm sorry, I did call him. I asked I asked I called the leader of the Nationals. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. The ayes have it. Is there a division required? A division is required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
the doors. Order. The question is that the Leader of the House be no longer heard. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Ryan and Riverina for the yes side and for the honourable members for Shortland and Hindmarsh, tell us for the noes.
Order. The result of the division is the ayes 46, noes 78. The question is therefore resolved in the negative. Minister. I move that the motion be put. And I ask you to take action against the member for Warringah. You witness that. You witness that. I did not hear what the member said, Minister. The time, my time's expired, Chris. No, I move the motion be put. The, 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 I can at any time move that the motion be put, and I have done so. The question is that the motion be put. The question is. Point of order. Madam Speaker, the member, Leader of Government Business in the House has moved for, a motion. Member for, His time has expired. It is now the opportunity of the opposition to respond. You have not got the call, Member for Sturt. You have not yet got the call, Member for Sturt. Member for Sturt. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. The opposition has. This is jackboot member, government. The member for Sturt will of the will Leader of the opposition. The Member for Sturt will resume his seat. The member for Sturt is warned. Minister. Deputy Speaker, I note that that is the second warning for the member for Sturt today, and I ask that you take the appropriate action and name him. I have warned the member for Sturt. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Minister. Take action. No. I, I, move, I move that the motion be put. The minister did have the call. I called the minister. For the third time, I move that the motion be put. Advice, Yes, and you just think that the um, minister is entitled to move that the motion be put at any time. Mm -hmm. So now the question is that the motion be put. Thank you very much. Order. The minister is entitled to ask that the motion be put at any time, and I now put the question. The question is that the question is that the motion be put. All of those of that opinion say aye. If those against say no. I think the ayes eyes have it. Do the noes have it? Is a division required? Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
the doors. Order. The, mo the question is that the motion be agreed to. I appoint. Uh, the eyes will pass to the right of the chair. The left will pass. The nose will pass to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Hindmarsh and Shortland for the eyes. The honourable members for Ryan and Riverina as tellers for the nose.
result of the division of eyes 77, noes 45. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. I call the Leader of Government Business. I move, I move that the Leader of the Opposition be required immediately. Order, 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 the order. Order, order, the member, the member. The question is that the motion be agreed to. All of those opinions say aye, against no. Aye. Is a division required? A division is required. Ring the bells. The bells will be rung for one minute. Members must remain in their seats unless they are changing their vote or they did not vote in the previous division, in which case they must report to the tellers. I appoint the same tellers as in the previous division. The question is that the motion be agreed to.
Order. The result of the division, uh, ayes 77, noes 47. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. I call the Leader of Government Business. Thank you, uh, Mr. Madam Deputy Speaker. I move that the Leader of the Opposition be required immediately for a period not exceeding five minutes to one, condemn and retract the irresponsible and reckless attack, attack on the independence of the Governor of the Reserve Bank by the member for Canning this morning when he said, the fact that Glenn Stevens has been caught out, he put up the interest rates before the election, during the election, when the rest of the world were bringing down interest rates, and now, in a way to cover the government's inept behaviour, they are bringing down interest rates at probably the most rapid rate Australia has ever seen. It really is chaotic, shambolic." End quote. End quote. Point, point, we have more. Point two, point two, to condemn and retract the unprecedented attack on the truthfulness of the Secretary of the Treasury by Senator Abetz yesterday, and three, to apologise and retract his own reckless and irresponsible attack on the Secretary of the Treasury in question time on Tuesday at a time of global financial crisis. In the last three days, we have seen three unprecedented attacks from the Liberal Party of Australia. Order. The Honourable. We had an agreement. The Honourable Leader. Order. 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 The Leader take his seat. The Honourable Acting Government uh, Opposition. Uh, member for Sturt will do, yes. Uh, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, I have a serious uh, point of order to you. Uh, I would seek, on behalf of the Opposition, your ruling as to whether this motion is in order, given that it not just condemns the Leader of the Opposition but requires him to undertake an action which, in our view, is a potential breach of privilege of the House and therefore order. out of order. order. Don't know where for Sturt was. The motion's in order. The Honourable Leader of Government Business. Order of Government Business. Thank Mr Speaker. Order. Honourable Member Faringa. Further to the point of order raised uh, by the Member for Sturt, this motion puts words in the mouth of a member of this parliament. It is a fundamental affront to all Westminster principles for this parliament to seek to control the words and control the order. thinking order. of another order. member of parliament. It is order. absolutely the essential the honourable that member, the honourable this member motion, will resume this his seat. The honourable member will resume his seat. The honourable member will resume his seat. The motion is in order. The honourable uh, leader of government business. Thank you. Order. The honourable, the honourable, the honourable member will resume his seat. We have a motion before the chair. The honourable, the leader. The honourable member for Sturt. The, the honourable member for Sturt will remove his seat. Member for Banks. Speaker, my point of order is in relation to the purported dissent from your ruling, as I understand it. Having been in this place for 18 and a half years and on the procedures committee, there actually needs to be a ruling before a dissent motion needs can be put. In this instance, the procedure that's being adopted is the procedure since Federation, which is that a motion is read at the completion of the motion. The motion can then be made being read and placed before the House. It can then be circulated. What the opposition are asking for is unprecedented and, in my view, is disruptive. Order. The Honourable Member for Sturt. Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, I very clearly asked you a quite specific question for a ruling on the uh, order of this motion. You ruled that it was in order, and I am moving dissent from your ruling. Yeah. 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 Mr. Mr Speaker, Sturt, resume your seat. Writing, remember your seat. Re resume your seat. Honourable uh, Leader of Government Business. 
Yes, Mr. Deputy Speaker. In the last three days, we've seen unprecedented attacks on the Liberal Party from the Liberal Party on Australia's independent financial regulators. The fact is, we've seen at a time of global financial crisis. Order. Order. The Honourable resume your seat. Member for Stort. Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, you know perfectly well that a dissent motion takes precedence over any other motion before the House, and you must take that motion. That is a fundamental principle of the House, and you know it full well. And I'd ask you, therefore, to give me the call to speak to the dissent motion, which is in writing, moved and seconded. The member for Stuart wish to move dissent in the chair? I have moved dissent in the chair's ruling. This is about the fourth time. One moment. Is the, uh, is the motion in writing? It is. Donna Wimmer for Stuart. Thank you, motion. Mr Speaker. The opposition is dismayed to have to take a motion of dissent in the acting, speaker's ruling, acting Deputy Speaker's ruling. This is a critical issue about Westminster democracy and the parliamentary process. And we are very disappointed, shocked and surprised that the Acting Deputy Speaker right would make a ruling that such a motion then. would be in order. We have heard from the member of Banks trying to run interference on behalf of the incompetent and failed manager of government business in the House. This motion is unprecedented, it is uncalled for and it is out of order. It is out of order because it is unparliamentary. It is a potential breach of privilege. There are motions in the House that could be moved about the misleading of the House by a member of the House, about con a condemnatory motion saying that a member of the House uh, should be condemned for an action that is utterly unprecedented in the history of Federation for a motion to be moved demanding an action by any member of this House. It is a breach of their privilege. It is a denial of freedom of speech and it is a denial of the rights of every Australian to be able to express their views. This government so drunk with power, so overblown with their own importance and rhetoric, in the midst of a major international crisis, having bungled the financial response to that crisis, leading to a dislocation of the financial sector, a freeze on retirees and farmers and small businesses, a savings and deposits, is facing one of the greatest, gravest crises in the history of this federation. And yet, they come into the House today and move a motion which is essentially which is outside the standing order of this House, which is potentially a breach of privilege. They have the time, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, they have the time to come in here and waste at least an hour of this House's time in the midst of an international financial crisis on a ridiculous motion condemning and demanding that the opposition do something that he should not, one, be condemned for, and two, they cannot ask him to come into the House and perform an action. And yet that is what this government is doing. What is the Treasurer doing? What is the Prime Minister doing? What is the Minister for Finance doing? What is the Minister for Infrastructure doing at this crucial time? I'll tell you what they're doing, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker. They are wasting the time of this House. They are wasting taxpayers' money. Their eye is not on the ball. It wasn't on the ball two weeks ago Order. on the weekend of October Order. 12th and 13th, Order. and it's Order. not on the ball now. Order. The uh, government whip. Well, Mr. S Mr. Uh, Acting Deputy Speaker, a dissent motion in your ruling is a very serious matter, and the, the mover of the dissent motion must show in what way he disagrees with your ruling. Order. Order. The honourable member will uh, address the motion before the chair, which is dissent in my ruling, and not go into the broader, into the broader debate. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Sturt. The Acting Deputy Speaker for his guidance. The crucial point to our dissent motion against the ruling of the Acting Deputy Speaker is that this motion is out of order. It is out of order because it is a breach of privilege. The Acting Deputy Speaker ruled it in order. For that reason, we have dissented from his ruling. We are entitled to do so. This is a democracy. Although in the last few months we might be foolish for, for, for believing perhaps that some of our democratic traditions have been thrown out the window by this government. We weren't allowed to ask them questions, apparently. How dare we ask them questions about their scrutiny and accountability of their failed uh, financial package? And yet, and today, we see the situation where the manager of opposition uh, government business in the House has come in, moved a frivolous motion, a foolish motion, a trivial motion, 
reduce the House to a, a, a sideshow, a ragtime show, as the, as the Australian reported today. A ragtime show is on display from this gov manager of government business in the House, who thinks he's so clever, and this government, which thinks it's so clever. So they've moved a motion which is out of order, which is a breach of privilege, and I can tell you one thing, we on this side of the House will not stand by and tolerate an attack on the freedom of speech of any member of parliament in this place. Even a member of the government. Even a member of the government will stand up for their right for freedom of speech. Even the member for Fowler and the member for Petrie have been attacking the government's education revolution this week. We're not going to try and close them down, unlike the government. Should we next, I suppose? The manager of government business will probably move a gag right. on the member for Fowler next time she tries to speak. I ask the honourable member to come back to the motion. We are of the view, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, that, we, that, that freedom of speech is at issue in this debate. If this motion is allowed to be carried, if it is allowed to be debated, according to your ruling, if it is allowed to be debated, it will be a denial of the freedom of speech of the Leader of the Opposition and other members of this House. Uh, it is, it, there is no precedent in the history of the Federation for a motion to be moved demanding that a member of parliament attend this House and perform an action and to use certain words, as my honourable friend the member of Flinders interjects, to use certain words, not even to give the Leader of the Opposition the opportunity to come into this House and speak if he wishes to do so. And, and by the way, he would have been happy to do so yesterday if the government had had the, 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 um, the courage <laughs> If the government had had the courage to move a censure motion on the Leader of the Opposition, which they went around the gallery yesterday saying they were going to censure the Leader of the Opposition and didn't have the guts to come into the House and do so, so he would have been happy to put this debate on the table. Where is the Prime Minister? I respond to the interjection. Where is the Prime Minister? Where is the Prime Ministerial statement on the financial crisis? There is no precedent in the history of this Federation for such a financial crisis to be bedevilling the Australian public. And yet the Prime Minister refuses to come into the House and give a Prime Ministerial statement. Order. I digress, Order. Mr. Acting Deputy Speaker. You do. I digress. <laughs> the, the opposition's view is absolutely clear. We will stand up for freedom of speech. Yeah. We will not tolerate an attack on the freedom of speech of any member of this House. Yeah. Your ruling is false and wrong. I'm sorry to have to say so. We have great respect for the, for the Acting Deputy Speaker. But on this occasion, uh, he has allowed himself to fall into unsound thinking on these standing orders and how they operate. The standing orders are very clear. Uh, this, this, this motion is out of order. It should be rejected. You should re revisit your, uh, your ruling and make it quite clear that this is out of order. We should return to the normal transmission of government business in this House, as was planned. This is a stunt. It was a surprise attack, a Pearl Harbor on the opposition. But we were ready for you. We were ready for you, because we know not to trust the manager of government business in the House. We know not to trust him. He, he didn't even show us the schedule of sittings until 9.01 this morning. And he comes in and moves a motion when he told me it was going to be on national rental affordability. And as soon as I'm out of the chamber, he moves a motion of this kind. So we know not to trust. We know not to trust. I asked you, I asked the manager of government business if the next item was rental affordability, and you said yes. And as soon as I was down the corridor, thinking that you had a clear run, you moved a motion. Well, we were back here pretty quick, smart, and we're on to you. We are on to you, and we're not going to tolerate these attacks on the freedom of speech of the Leader of the Opposition or any other member of this House. This motion is out of order. It is wrong. The Speaker's ruling was wrong. We dissent from the Speaker's ruling, and we ask him to change his mind. Order. I need a seconder. Seconder of the motion. Motion is seconded. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, uh, this, uh, this, this, this dissent, this dissent is very important, uh, and. It is critical to the standing and the reputation of this parliament that the dissent motion moved by the member for Stern, <coughs> which I am seconding now, uh, is carried by this House. Uh, what you've done, Mr Deputy Speaker, in accepting the motion from the Leader of the House, you have accepted a motion which offends a fundamental principle of our democracy. Mr Deputy Speaker, the greatest principle of our democracy, the principle which has echoed down the ages, the principle which has made Westminster parliaments respected throughout the world, is the principle of the absolute sanctity of free speech. And that great, and that great principle of parliamentary privilege is designed to ensure that no member of parliament 
can be interfered with Absolutely. in going about his duty as he sees it. And the problem with this resolution or this motion, uh, which uh, I regret to say you have accepted thus far, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, is that offends this great principle. It seeks not just to condemn the Leader of the Opposition, uh, not just to disagree with the Leader of the Opposition, but it seeks to put words into the mouth of the Leader of the Opposition. It seeks to control the thoughts of the Leader of the Opposition. Now, Mr Speaker, I say, I say to members of opposite, they can disagree, they can condemn, but they cannot dictate. And all the numbers in the world does not, do not justify trying to dictate to a member of this parliament. And if members opposite persist, having listened to the arguments in this current debate, if they persist in this course of conduct, they will be guilty of bringing into this chamber the worst standards of political thuggery Tammany Hall and Sussex Street rolled into one and imported into this great chamber of democracy. Mr Deputy Speaker, it is utterly offensive, utterly offensive to try to control what members of this parliament say. Mr Speaker, it is, I, I uh, have been a member of a government. Uh, I have been uh, in command of the numbers of this House uh, uh, for the six years in which I was the leader of the government in this House. And I have to say that not once did the former government try this trick. Not once would the former government have even contemplated pulling a stunt like this because it is fundamentally against all principles of democracy. It is fundamentally against all conceptions uh, of free speech. Mr Deputy Speaker, if this motion uh, is permitted, uh, the government uh, could quite conceivably come into this chamber, uh, put a motion calling on all opposition members to support a government bill, demanding that we support a government bill. Uh, and they could use their numbers to completely crush any dissent, uh, any opposition in this House. Um, I, Mr, Mr, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, um, I know uh, how uh, politicians in this place uh, are always looking uh, for political advantage. Uh, and I know uh, how the Leader of the House uh, looked at a couple of newspaper reports this morning uh, saying that the Leader of the Opposition uh, said something which went a little bit too far and he thought, aha, let us come out uh, and fundamentally embarrass the Leader of the Opposition. Now, if uh, he gave the Leader of the Opposition five minutes to speak, fair enough, uh, fair enough. If he simply condemned the Leader of the Opposition, fair enough. But, but, but to try to put the Leader of the Opposition on his feet and to try to put words into the leader's, Leader of the Opposition's mind, that is one giant step too far. It's one giant step too far. And Mr Deputy Speaker, you are a man of decency, of integrity. You are a man who has overcome hurdles to be in this place. You should understand, of all people, just how precious it is to be in this House and just how important are those principles of free speech and independence of mind which should govern every member of parliament's actions. And that's why uh, you should have ruled differently, and that's why this dissent should be carried. The Honourable uh, the Leader of Government Business. You, Mr. Speaker, I rise to support your ruling. The former Leader of the House, when he was Leader of the House, moved in one motion, not two, to suspend standing orders and demand action and refer the member for Perth to the Privileges Committee. In a very similar fashion, the member for Warringah might recall, might recall, might recall, and he expresses no opposition, no opposition to that. Did exactly, did exactly this, and the, your ruling is consistent with the determination of the Parliament at Order. that time, with Order. one exception, Mr. S Mr. Deputy Speaker, with one exception. We have done this properly. They did not. They did not. They did it in one motion. We have done it in accordance 
with standing orders. What this motion that you have ruled is in order will do is ask the Leader of the Opposition to come into this parliament and to retract and to retract on behalf of on behalf of the opposition three statements three statements because in the last 3 days we have seen unprecedented attacks from the opposition on Australia's financial regulators on Tuesday the leader of the opposition called for Dr Ken Henry the secretary of the treasury to be sacked on Wednesday, Senator Abetz called the Secretary of the Treasurer a liar, and now on Thursday you have the member for Canning alleging that the Governor of the Reserve Bank is politically biased and is incompetent. This Order. is an unprecedented attack Order. on the— Order. Chris, Chris. Uh, the Honourable Member for the North Coast. Is of the dissent. Order. 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 The Honourable Leader of Government Business. On the integrity and independence of our most senior economic regulators during a global financial crisis. Dr Henry and Governor Stevens served the Howard government with distinction. They were appointed by the Liberal Party and they served them well. The decision by the Leader of the Opposition to attack these men directly and through the member for Canning is political cannibalism of the worst kind. This is the Leader of the Opposition showing that he is willing to say anything, do anything and trample over anyone to score short-term political points. Mr Deputy Speaker, confidence is absolutely critical at a time Order. of global financial Order. The honourable member for government business resume his seat. Honourable member for Menzies. This is a, a very specific motion. The Leader of the House is required in this motion to argue why your ruling should not be dissented from, not to breach out into the wider range of debate which he's engaged in now. I ask you to bring him back to the motion before the chair. Order. The honourable, uh, Leader of Government Business will address the question. Mr. Uh, Speaker, of I'm dissent. going directly to the points raised by the member for Sturt in his reason for moving dissent. The reason why this motion should be allowed to be debated by this House and determined by this House, the elected members, is that at a time of global financial crisis. Confidence is absolutely critical. Confidence in Australia's economic regulators. Confidence, confidence in our independent financial regulators. At order, order. The honourable member for government business resume his seat. Order, order. Uh, the uh, leader of the National Party. The, the the leader of the of government business is defying your ruling. He is required to speak on, the, on whether or not your ruling is correct, and he is, and he is clearly moving on to areas of debate. Thank you. The Honourable um, Leader of Government Business will address the motion of dissent before the Chair. Because this motion, this motion is not just entitled to be moved before this House, it is imperative that it be moved before this House. Because attacking the credibility of our economic regulators during a global financial crisis is like defaming the fire department during a bushfire. It's not on. It's not on. And this motion has been moved to give the Leader of the Opposition Order. the opportunity Order. to come into this House, to come into this House and, and ensure, and ensure that we Cook. walk away from this parliamentary fortnight at a time of global financial crisis with the whole of the House of Representatives expressing confidence in the Reserve Bank of Australia, in the, in the Secretary of the Treasury, in our independent financial regulators. Because this is not a time, this is not a time when working families are under pressure 
to go out there and think that it is acceptable to attack Dr Henry, to attack Governor Stevens in the reckless and irresponsible way that has occurred, that has occurred over the past three days. And that is why, that is why this parliament should not only debate this resolution, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility at this time of global financial crisis to debate, to debate this resolution, which would, after all, which would, after all, simply, simply require the leader of the opposition to express confidence in the secretary of the treasury, to express confidence in the governor of the Reserve Bank, but, but they will go to any lengths, any lengths, to avoid the Leader of the Opposition acting responsibly. Because this is no longer a question just about policy. This is a question of character and this is a question of leadership. And I say to the former Leader of the Opposition that he would have understood that at a time of global financial crisis you don't attack the Secretary of the Treasury, you don't attack the Governor of the Reserve Bank. Because if the Leader of the Opposition fails to condemn today's attack on the Reserve Bank, he fails the test of character and leadership that all national leaders face. All national leaders face. This is a critical moment in time. This is a big test, and we are providing an opportunity for Order. the Leader of the Opposition. Order. The uh, Leader of Government Business resume his seat. The Honourable Member for Menzies. On a point of order. Mr Speaker, if the Leader of the House had wanted to move a censure motion, he could have done so. His remarks would go to a censure motion now. He should come back to the question before the Chair. The uh, Member for Government Business will address the Leader of Government Business will address the motion before the Chair, which is in dissent of the Chair's ruling. I am doing, I am doing that, Mr Deputy Speaker, because, because I am addressing why this resolution is in order. I have addressed why it is consistent with <coughs> resolutions that were moved by those opposite when they sat over here, and I have addressed why it is particularly important, particularly important at this moment in time of global financial crisis, global financial crisis, that this occur, that this occur, because the leader of the opposition does face a test today to back the stability of the economy and the stability of our regulators. There are consequences, consequences for ordinary working people in every electorate that we represent of a failure, a failure to have confidence in our regulators. Those on this side of the House have confidence in our economic yeah, regulators. Yeah, in our economic regulators. In the 12 years that we sat in opposition, we sat in opposition. There were no attacks from our leaders, from our leadership, on the Secretary of the Treasury. There were no attacks on governors of the Reserve Bank, because we understood that at ordinary times that would be <coughs> unwise and irresponsible. But at a time of global financial crisis, it is simply reckless and dangerous. And that is why, that is why the leader of the opposition should take the opportunity provided by this resolution to come into this house and express confidence in the Reserve Bank of Australia and express confidence Order. in the Secretary of the Treasury. Order, order. The leader of the. Uh... Oh, the order. The honourable, the honourable, the government whip. Yeah. Um, Mr Deputy Speaker, this the is a very serious a motion before the House, a dissent in your order. ruling. And I recall the remarks, Madam, Mr Deputy, the uh, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker. Seat. Just before uh, the order, the Honourable Government Whip will resume his seat. The order, order, before the order, before the Honourable Member uh, puts his point of order, uh, I gave the second of the right to speak, which gave two from the opposition to speak on the motion of dissent. I intend to give 
two from the government side to speak on the reply. Order. Honourable Member, the Honourable National Party Leader will resume his seat. The Honourable Government Whip, order. The Honourable Member will resume his seat. Order. The Government Whip. Uh, and and Mr. Uh, Mr. Acting Deputy Speaker, in condemning your ruling in supporting the dissent, what the member for Raringa said was, I was Leader of the House. I never did anything like this in my term as Leader of the House. I present the evidence, Mr Dep Deputy Speaker, to support your ruling. And in fact, it is a report of the Procedure Committee, Chair Margaret May, motion to suspend standing orders and condemn a member, report on the events of 10 October 2006. 2006. And what did it report on? It reported on a motion moved by the honourable member for Raringa when he was Leader of the House. And what did the Procedure Committee find, Mr Deputy Speaker? Did the, did the, uh, the Procedure Committee say that the member for Raringa was uh, correct, that he uh, had followed the proper course? Of course it didn't. It actually recommended unanimously, unanimously uh, that Standing Order 47 be changed, that in fact that we should have two motions, just as the Leader of the House today has moved. Can I say that the member for Raringa, in speaking to this motion, is absolutely condemned by his own words, his own lack of memory, and his own actions when he was leader of the House? Now, Mr. Deputy Speaker, both motions draw attention to the fact that we, this Parliament is sitting at a time of global crisis. Is this disputed by the opposition? Are they saying no? There's no global crisis. And, and, Mr. And, and Mr Deputy Speaker, can I say, are the opposition offering bipartisan support? No, they're not. No, they're not, Mr Deputy Speaker. They are not offering bipartisan support. And this is what is objected to by the Leader of the House and the government members on this side of the House. They are, they are not only not offering bipartisan support, what they are doing is playing petty politics at a cri time of crisis for ordinary people. And they're attacking, Mr Deputy Speaker, in the most shameful way. The most shameful way. The Governor of the Reserve Bank. They're attacking the leader of the opposition. Indeed himself is attacking, Mr Deputy Speaker. Order. Order. The Honourable Government Whip will resume his seat. The Honourable Member. For Ryan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Acting Deputy Speaker. I really would uh, urge that the Chief order, Government Whip order, speak order. to the motion. He's going on. This is absolute diatribe. So the Honourable Member for Ryan resume his seat. The Honourable Member for the Honourable Government Whip. Well, it does, we'll Mr. Deputy the Speaker. It asks the, the Leader of the Opposition to desist and withdraw from his attacks on Glenn Stevens, the Governor of the Reserve Bank, on Mr. Henry. The Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, of course it does. Of course it does. Well, and Mr Deputy Speaker, I know when we go back to our electorates, people on this side will want us to be acting in the national interest. Order. Not attacking Order. our officials. Order. Not trying Order. to create dissent and confusion. Order. The Honourable Government Whip will resume his seat. The Honourable Member for Menzies speaker, uh, on a point Mr. of order. Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, on a point of order, um, the, the Chief Order. The Chief Government Whip. I ask whip. members not to address across the chamber. Order. Order. The member for Cook. Order. Order. The member for Menzies on a Thank point you, of order. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Acting Deputy Speaker. The Chief Government Whip uh, is sadly mistaken about the motion which he's debating. He's now debating the substantive motion, not the motion about your ruling. And I ask you to draw him back to the motion which is currently before the chair, and that's the motion uh, about your ruling, sir. Order. I ask the honourable member of uh, the honourable government whip to address the issue of dissent before the uh, before the chair. Order. The honourable member's time. The honourable member's time has expired. The member for Kennedy, Mr. Speaker, Kennedy um, having had discussions with my colleague, uh, mm. uh, the honourable member for New England, 
and his viewpoint, I, I think, is uh, the same as uh, my own. Um, I take, I take the view that the country is in a fairly serious situation. Um, we have to find 80,000 million to meet the balance of payments next year, because we have no manufacturing and closing down agriculture. Our housing values, Mr. Our housing values, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> are six times average annual earnings, whereas in America they're only three times. So if they've got a crisis, our crisis is far worse. The economy is being carried by mining, and I represent the biggest mining province on earth. Our mine prices are down 30 per cent, possibly 50 per cent. Zinc, which is a very good barometer, mineral indicator, is down from $4,000-odd down to about $1,400. Mr. Mr Acting Speaker, that is the seriousness of yep. the crisis that we're in. And I really think that every member here should think about what I'm saying when I say that we really need a bipartisan crisis approach to what is a very, very serious crisis that is going to be, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, worse next year than it is this year. So we want, please, everyone to work together to give the people of Australia some confidence in what is happening. Now, the proposition being put forward, now I take your interjection, the proposition being put forward by the government is that the opposition can't attack a public servant. Now, if you read your history, and everyone here should just read what happened in 1929 to 1932, because Gibson was dead wrong. The head of the Reserve Bank was incredibly wrong. He took the advice of Otto Niemeyer, and everyone knows now that Niemeyer probably caused the Depression. That is a quote from Winston Churchill, by the way. Not my quote. Not my quote. Um, it was a quote from Winston Churchill. But we took Niemeyer's advice. So the proposition that the government is putting forward that the people on this side can't attack a public servant, I'm sorry, that is not a proposition that I agree with. I think that that is very important that be established. But having said that, Mr Speaker, I, I just can't help but say my own judgment upon what the opposition are doing is that they are indulging in partisan politics Order. in a time— Order. In a time— Well, you can laugh and you can Order. scoff. But this is very, very serious indeed. Order. In a time where I think Order. we should be pulling Honourable together. member will resume his seat. The time for the dissent motion has passed. The motion, the honourable member for Kenninger has a point of order. Uh, you have a point of order. Moves that the member for Kennedy have an extension of time. Uh, no provision uh, for uh, for that. Uh, member for Kenning, the motion is that. Um, the, member, the uh, chairman's ruling be descended. I put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? No. I think the noes have it. No. Uh, is a division required? Uh, ring the bells for four minutes.
The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint the members for Hindmarsh and Shortland, tellers for the noes, and members for Ryan and Riverina, tellers for the ayes.
order. Results of the division, ayes 56, noes 75. Therefore, the question is uh, therefore uh, negated. Negated. Thank you. To you, sir. Thank you. The honourable member, the uh, minister, leader of government business. I move that the motion be put. Order. Order. The motion. Uh, the motion will be put. The, uh, the question is that the motion be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. Against? Aye. I think the ayes have it. Aye. Division required? Division is required. Ring the bells for one minute. Order. Lock the doors. The question is that the motion be put. 
Members should have remained in their seats unless they were changed. Oh, was it? Oh, you've all been having fun. I appoint uh, the ayes will pass the right of the chair, the noes to the left, and I appoint the honourable members for Shortland and Hindmarsh. Tell us for the eyes, and the members for Riverina and Ryan tell us for the nose.
Order. The result of the division is ayes 75, noes 56. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The question now is the motion moved by the Leader of the House be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. The contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. I appoint the same tellers as for the previous division. Members must remain in their seat unless they are leaving the chamber or they did not vote in the previous division or they are changing their vote, in which case they must report to the tellers. The question is that the motion moved by the Leader of the House be agreed to. Members should have remained in their seats unless they were changing their vote. If they did not vote in the previous division, they should have reported to the tellers. Order. The result of the division is I 76, noes 56. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The member for Sturt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask leave of the House to move the following motion: that the Prime Minister be invited to remain in the House to make a prime ministerial statement concerning his bungled mismanagement of the deposit guarantee policy of the government amidst the most serious financial crisis since the Great Depression. Is leave granted? Is leave granted? Leave is not granted. Mr. Speaker. I move that so much of standing order. Sorry, I wait. The member for Sturt. Mr. Speaker, I move that so much of standing orders be suspended, as it would prevent the member for Sturt from moving the following motion forthwith: that the Prime Minister be invited to remain in the House to make a Prime Minister or return to the House, given he's now scurried out of it, to remain in the House to make a Prime Ministerial statement concerning order. his bungled the mismanagement member for of the Sturt deposit will guarantee. Seat. The member for Sturt. The member for Sturt will resume his seat. The member for Sturt will resume his seat. The Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry. Mr Speaker, the member for Sturt can't begin his speech midway through moving his resolution. No, 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 no. 
Right. Well, we'll check when it's put in writing. We'll check if what you said right. is what's there in writing. Right. The member for Sturt will resume his seat. If the, if the minister wants his first warning, I'm aware, I'm aware, minister, I'm aware, minister, that he's been warned twice. I was the first to warn him, and it's not assisting the chair that sort of behaviour. The member for Sturt who gets a Heaps of generosity just really needs to learn to not make those type of remarks. The point of order that was made by the uh, Minister for Agriculture, I will seek the assistance of the member for Sturt whether those words that he added when reading out his motion actually form part of the motion, because if they do, it uh, might jeopardise the motion. Minister the member for Sturt. I can inform the Speaker that uh, they don't form part of the motion, and I'm prepared to the read the motion again. The Minister for Defence, Science, Personnel. The member for Sturt will just complete his motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I move that so much of standing orders be suspended as would prevent the member for Sturt from moving the following motion: that the Prime Minister be invited to remain in the House to make a prime ministerial statement concerning his bungled mismanagement of the deposit guarantee policy of the government amidst the most serious financial crisis since the Great Depression. Mr Speaker, the, the Prime Minister— The member for Sturt will resume his seat. The Minister for Agriculture. I move that the Speaker be no longer heard. Order. The question is that the Speaker be no longer heard. All those of that opinion say aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Division required. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes. Whilst nobody has raised the point of order for the clarification to the House, whilst it may have been reasonable to only allow for a one-minute division, given the time and other things that had occurred, I thought that it was in the best interest of the House to ring the bells for four minutes so that there could be no, no confusion.
Lock the doors. The question is that the member be no longer heard. The ayes pass the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Shortland and Highmarsh Tellers for the ayes and the members for Riverina and Ryan Tellers for the noes. The result of the division is 
Ayes 73, noes 56. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The Leader of the National Party. Mr. Speaker, is the motion sec seconded? The Leader I of the National Party. The, uh, the, the Leader of the National Party resumes his seat. The Leader of the National Party resumes his seat. The Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry. I move that the member be no longer heard. Order. The question is that the member be no longer heard. All those of that opinion say aye. Contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Division required. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. One minute. I appoint the same tellers as for the previous division. Members should remain in their seats unless they are leaving the chamber or they did not vote in the previous division or they are changing their vote, in which case they must report to the tellers. The question is that the member be no longer heard. Members should have remained in their seats unless they were changing their votes. They did not vote in the previous division, in which case they should have reported to the tellers by now. Order. The result of the division is ayes 73, noes 56. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The question now is that the motion for the suspension of standing orders moved by the member for Sturt be agreed to. The Leader of the House. Thanks, Mr Speaker. I table a letter of unreserved apology from the Federal Member for Canning uh, but to the Governor of the Reserve Bank. The Federal Order. Member for Canning can apologise and recognise when he's done wrong against an independent financial regulator, something that the Leader of the Opposition doesn't have the humility or the foresight the Leader of the House to do. His seat. The Leader of the House will resume his seat. The Member for Sturt. Mr Speaker, I move that the, speaker be no, the member be no longer heard. Order. The question is that the member be no longer heard. All those of that opinion say ayes. ayes. Contrary, no. Ayes. I think the noes have it. Division required. Division required. Ring the bells for one minute. One minute. You have one minute.
Or to lock the doors. The question is that the member be no longer heard. The eyes will pass to the right of the chair, the nose to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Ryan and Riverina tell us for the eyes and the members for Hindmarsh and Shortland tell us for the nose. Order. The result of the division is eyes 56, nose 73. The question is therefore negative.
order. The Leader of the House. Mr Speaker, I, I suggest that it's a view of the manager of opposition business and myself that the motion be put now. But, uh, oh, I'm only willing All right. The question is that the motion moved by the member for Sturt for the suspension of standing orders be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, no. I think the noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for, for one minute. Yes, sorry. The, this is a one-minute division. Or to lock the doors. The question is that the motion moved by the member for Sturt for the suspension of standing orders be agreed to. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint the honourable members for Ryan and Riverina Tellers for the ayes and the members for Hindmarsh and Shortland Tellers for the noes.
Order. The result of the division is ayes 59, no 75. The question is therefore negative. Order. It being past 2 p.m., the proceedings are interrupted in accordance with Standing Order 97. Right. The Chief Government Whip, the yeah, member for Chifley. Border, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I have uh, been seeking the call to raise a matter of privilege. Are you indicating to me that this be Order, better have, done after the question? Call. I have, the, have call. the call. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the Daily Telegraph today, Mr. Steve Lewis has written an article which appears to reflect that he had access to the report of the Privileges and Members' Interests Committee, which will be tabled later today. The article appears to be a selective leak of the committee's conclusions about the behaviour of both the member for Robinson and the Shadow Minister for Early Childhood, Education, Child Care, Women and Youth and member for Indi, which, as a matter of fact, were not dissimilar. The article does not mention the committee's Order. conclusions about the member for Indi at all. The leaking of any report is damaging to the operation of a committee. The selective leaking of this report is even more da damaging to the successful operation of, uh, of the committee. Mr Speaker, this is the first time that a Privileges Committee report has been leaked to my knowledge. And I believe that honourable members share my concerns at this serious apparent leaking of the report, and I table a copy uh, of the article. Order. If the Chief Government Whip is seeking some guidance on whether there should be further action taken, uh, in accordance with the practice that's been established by the House, the committee itself should consider the matter only to the extent that it should consider the matter, particularly whether the matter is caused or is likely to cause substantial interference with its work with the committee system or with the House, or with the proper functioning of the House. So it would be in the first instance a matter for the committee itself. Order. Questions without notice. Are there any questions?